Greetings Earthlings. In today's video we're going to go over straight edge and compass constructions. Now in the previous videos we've actually already seen this introduced but it was kind of in a silly manner and it wasn't very formal. I'm referring to the sand videos where, where I was on the beach. Now pardon me I may have to look down some notes periodically and let's dive in. So first of all what are straight edge and compass constructions? Very simple. They involve two instruments, a straight edge and a compass. A straight edge is something like a ruler, except a ruler has markings on it to indicate distance. So the actual historical Greek straight edge is literally just a straight edge, so there's no markings on it. And it can be of any length, so you, you should be able to draw a line of any desired length. And it's used to connect points, it's used to extend segments, for various things. Now, a compass looks like something like this. So actually, this is my great-grandfather's old um, compass set from his days, at, I think, uh, from his days as an aeronautical engineer. So this might be all the way from like France from the 19, I don't know, 30s or something. Anyway, so I, I, this is kind of a memento for me. It's pretty cool. So show you guys really quickly. So there's a ton of like different things in here, but they're all basically replacement parts and different length things. I don't know if you guys can see that. I'll just show you up close. So there's all of that stuff. Cool. And so in here we have a compass. So it basically looks like this. You spin it over here. One of these is just a sharp point. You put that on the paper. Don't prick your finger. And this part is just going to draw circles. Now, if you've watched the previous video of, of me on the sand, hopefully you can recognize that this is going to be, draw far more precise circles than what I was doing on the sand. So I won't be using this for the board, but just so you guys know, that's a traditional compass. All right. Now for the part of the video that I really like. What, <laughs> why do people care? Like. Who cares? I, a lot of times kids are presented this stuff in school and I'll be honest, it's often overdone. It's just like weeks and weeks or just months of straight edge compass constructions and there's often not a motivation of like, why are we doing this? It seems kind of boring. So I want to talk about who cares. So although what we're going to do and you might, what you'll see, these might seem like pedantic or boring exercises meant to torture school children. Let's think for a second why the Greeks might have been obsessed with these. Going back to the sand video that I made, we can see that I made a terrible drawing in the sand because I eyeballed it. This gives us insight that if you want to build anything at all, like a, a useful structure in real life, like a building, you probably want it to be precise and not super crooked. In order to do that, even if it's something as simple as a 90 degree angle, the, these constructions that we're going to go over today, an introduction, will be super useful. I believe that's why they were so important to the Greeks. Of course, in addition to the philosophical reasons usually stated, and those involved that the Greeks are obsessed with finding the minimal set of kind of assumptions or axioms that could be the building blocks of a huge system. So because this knowledge went hand in hand with their building and architecture, and of course the Greeks are very famous for their buildings and architecture. Now I think as time went on, they became more of a curiosity onto themselves for philosophers and mathematicians. And the school kids have found these to be stupid because they've been sort of cut off from their roots and largely irrelevant to most students' lives. Because we take things for granted these days, such as how to create a 90 degree angle or find exactly where the middle of a building is. For example, like counting footsteps just won't cut it. It's sort of, you know, it's close, but it's not very precise. If I, if I have like 100 feet, I could say, oh, well, 100 feet took me, I don't know, 107 steps. So 
If I do 53 and a half steps, that'll be 50 feet. That's very rough because I may have not walked in a straight line and where am I gonna find exactly where half of my foot is? So hopefully that gives you a little bit of motivation. Now, although that's kind of, it's important roots, I believe one of the chief reasons to present the topic today of straight edge and compass constructions, aside from its historical significance, is simply that these constructions can be fun and help build creativity. So if, you, if it, this feels like torture, you know, maybe it's being overdone and I believe in everything in moderation. So have fun with this. If it's starting to feel kind of boring, then move on to something else. All right. So next, I'm going to go over some basic, these are some of the most simple constructions, but they're also some of the most common and useful ones. And I feel this will give you guys a little bit of a flavor for what's going on. Keep in mind though that for more like the fun creative stuff, you want to get into more intermediate and advanced constructions because these alone might give you the impression that, oh, this stuff is easy, boring, and repetitive. Like it's always the same stuff. So just for that, I'll give you, I'll leave you guys with an exercise so you can begin that process. So this is my notation. This upside down letter T just means perpendicular. I didn't want to write it all out. So our first exercise will be how do you construct the perpendicular bisector of a segment? So let's say here's our segment. I'm not going to use a ruler. In some classrooms, they have a nice big compass as well. So I'm just going to fudge it on the paper. But when I draw straight lines, just know that imagine I'm using a ruler. And if I draw any marks that are circular, just imagine I'm using a compass. You guys have a great imagination. All right. So we have a segment. And let's assume that's perfectly straight. I want to create the perpendicular bisector of this segment. So what does that mean? That means, let's say this is the middle. I want to be able to find this line that's at a 90 degree angle that goes right through the middle. How do we know where this line is and make it exactly 90 degrees? So that's our first exercise. And here's the technique. So we will take our compass, put your sharp point on the end point of the segment, and you're going to do what I'm about to show you, and then you would repeat the same thing on the right point. So with your compass, you're basically going to go bloop, bloop. So with the sharp edge here and the, the pencil part here, you would trace that out, trace that out. Now you would go to this point and do the same thing. So you would do bloop, bloop. That's my sound effect for drawing. All right. Now, where these intersect, you'll want to connect those, and if you connect those, that will be exactly this perpendicular bisector. Now, why does that work? I'm going to let you guys think about that for a second, but essentially, because we went the same distance here as we went here, we know that this point is the same distance from both of these endpoints. And same thing from that point. So the idea is since two points determine a line, that this point has to be the only point that's the same distance from these two that's on this line that goes through that line. Think about that a little more, but that's the technique. So number two, how do we find the midpoint? Well, actually, we already did that for number one. So I'm, I'm just going to redo it. Again, you do these arcs, boom, 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 boom. From this one, you go this way. And now when you connect these, which looks terrible the way I've drawn it, when you connect these, that point splits this into two equal parts. So there we've created a midpoint. All right, number three. Now number three may look like number one, but it's slightly different. I want to find the perpendicular line from any given point. So for example, here's your segment or line and I'm going to pick a point right over here and I want to create basically this line at 90 degrees. How do I make it so that it's super precise? Alright, so I'm going to connect this to the segment. This is the cool part, anything as long as it reaches. So that would reach, so let's say I would make a tick mark like that. 
and then you keep the same radius on your compass and do the same thing on the other side. Now from this side, while keeping the same radius, you're going to do that again over here. So you make another take, take, uh, little arc. And from here you're going to do another little arc this way. And now we've essentially done something we've almost done in steps one and two because we can connect these. I know my diagram kind of sucks, but um, which is ironic since I preached about gray diagrams earlier, but we'll roll with it. So what have I done now? Now this is going to be at 90 degrees. To convince yourself why that works, I'll let you guys think about that, but that, I'm going to show you guys the construction. So you, you can look up other resources, think about it. You, sh you should be able to convince yourself why this works. If not, always feel free to post a question. All right, number four, bisecting an angle. So here is some angle, and I want to create that exact split so that these two look the same. That's the notation for angle, by the way. All right, so we're going to take our compass, set it to any radius. You get an arc here, do the same radius here, so now you get another arc. Now. Maybe you guys are catching on. From here, we're going to do another arc here. And from this point, we're going to do the same radius arc here. Boom. And now we're going to connect this point to that point. And there you go. We have two equal angles. All right. Let's go to mirroring a point in a line. So to mirror a point in a line, What that means is we want to take this point and find where, if, if we were to reflect it across this line, where would this point be? I know I, I drew it approximately there, but I want to get it precisely correct. I also want to emphasize these are precisely correct in theory if we were to go through this procedure. Obviously, I'm using imprecise instruments, my hands, or any, I'll make another future video dealing with precision and perfect instruments, but for now, this is it. So. Mirror. So again, we're going to pick any length radius that can reach this line that's long enough. Uh, we want to hit it at two points. So we pick something like this. Boom. Uh, so we're going to keep the same radius. And now from here, we're going to keep the same radius. Make that arc. From here, that arc. And now we connect that. Oh, we don't need to connect them. That is your point. So we've just mirror reflected that point. All right. So those are the five steps. These might have seemed kind of boring or easier or not very exciting, but these are some of the common low-level ingredients that we're going to be using for more complex things. I probably will make another uh, part or two to this later in the, in the geometry series where we look at intermediate level constructions, but for now I'll leave it with that. So I'm going to leave you guys with a slightly cooler, more challenging exercise, which is trisect a segment. So given a segment, find a way to get these points with precision. Now just to give you guys a heads up, there are several solutions. There are at least two or three ways, if not more, to do this. So think about it. You know. I wouldn't recommend just Googling it. You, you can if you're stuck or if you want to check about alternate solutions. But I recommend, you know, try your best. All right. Next, I want to wrap up with this, which is, this is just a quick introduction. Just to put this topic on your map, it's a pretty important topic. So, but he, here's sort of what I would recommend exploring further. You can explore different constructions, trickier constructions than what I've shown you guys here. These were basic ones. You can explore other instruments. So we've talked about compasses, straight edges, but there are many others. So for ex just, I'm just going to give you guys a, a list just of a few of them. We have a sextant, an astrolabe, an alidade, a backstaff, a cross staff, a kamal, a quadrant, an octant, a pelorus and many more historical instruments, both for drawing, for navigation, especially for ships, 
trying to find your way through the stars. It's a really interesting and rich history. So I may put some links in the description, so make sure to check that out. And I'll let you guys explore. So explore different constructions, different instruments, as well as the history. It's a very rich history. And in the next video, we will discuss whether we can build a perfect protractor. See you guys.